Hi, I'm Andy from Soundcraft and welcome to another video on the VI Series software. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a software update on the VI consoles. This is a question a lot of people often ask how to do the software update properly and it's very simple as long as you follow the right steps. So first of all, go to soundcraft.com website and go to the VI product pages for your product, go to the download section and then download the two update files that you'll find on there. One file is called update console and the other file is called update updater. So there's those two files that are zipped up and you need to download those onto your computer but don't unzip them, leave them as zip files. One's a seven zip file, one is a normal zip file. And what you're going to do is you're going to copy those files onto a USB stick and take that USB stick and plug it into your console. So once we've downloaded the files and we've put them on our USB stick, then the process is very simple. There's a couple of things I'm going to show you before we start though, which is where you see what the software version on your console already is. So if you open the main menu screen, as soon as you open that menu screen, you see some information here which gives you the software version. So on this console here, we are looking at um, version 6.00252. Another thing you can check is what version f uh, firmware is in your fader section of your console. For that we go into the system page on desk and we see a representation of the control surface here with the different bays. Now inside these bays you see version numbers here and what you need to look at is the the last of the three numbers in each bay. So in this console we've got number 31 with the brackets one after it in each bay. Now 31 is the version of the fader firmware. Now not all software updates will change that fader firmware but the one I'm going to show you does so that you can see how that happens and how it's changed. But I'm showing you that screen just so we can see before we do the update what the version was to start with so it was number 31. And as I showed you in a minute ago, the software version of this console is 6.00 with a build number 252. So the first very important step before you do an upgrade on any of the VI consoles is to go into your show file menu and load a default show. So whatever show file you've got loaded on the console, go in and press the show defaults and select one of your shows up at the top in italics which are the read-only default shows and load that show. Then take your USB stick that you've copied the two zip files onto and you just need to put those in the root of the USB stick, don't put them in any folders and don't unzip those files. Um, if they are, if you've downloaded it on a Mac computer, check that um, they haven't, if the names of those files haven't been changed in any way before you put them onto the USB stick. Then we're going to just plug the USB stick into the front of the console here and then we press the power button up here. Just press it once, brings up the menu that normally comes up when you want to shut the console down. But what you see is if you've got a stick in the console with a valid software update on it, the middle button here, instead of saying fast restart, which you would normally say, it actually says update console software. If that doesn't say update console software but still says fast restart, then you've got a problem with your USB stick, you haven't got the right files on there. So go and check those files. So in this case we've got the right files, we've got the update console software button, so I'm going to press that and then it asks me if I want to save the show file but I can just say no to that because we've got a, a default show. Now the console restarts and then comes up with a menu. Now this is a two-stage operation because we've got two files on the stick, the first of those files is updating the program which actually handles the updating of software. So we occasionally update that, that program and this, in this case we are updating that program. So in this case we're going to update it from 50037 to 50038. You can see there's two buttons here, keep current version or install new version and what I need to do is use the illuminated keys here with the arrows to select the option I want because the touch screen doesn't actually work at this point so you have to use these buttons. So I'm going to select install new version and then I'm going to press the recall button 
to select that. The green tick shows me that that up update has been done. That's very fast. And then it tells me to press recall to continue. So I'm going to press recall again. Short pause, and then we get another menu. This is the second stage of the update. This is updating the main console application software. So what we have in the console at the moment is version 6.00. And what I'm going to upgrade it to is 6.41, which is on the USB stick. Now, underneath the, the main version number, you'll see some other uh, numbers. We've got default shows. We sometimes update those. We give them version numbers. You can see in this case, we're changing those from 4.1 up to 4.3. Default clipboard libraries, we've um, updated those from 2.06 to 2.07 with this stick. There's a thing called DB, which is a database internal to the software. We're updating that to 1.6 to 1.8. And the desk firmware, which is the fader firmware that I talked about at the start, that's being updated from version 31 to version 33. So now I need to install the new version. So use the arrow keys to select down the lower button, install new version press the recall key, and now you can see a progress bar that's showing you it's actually copying the software files from your USB stick onto the console. That'll take a few seconds. It's telling you what it's doing here, committing changes to disk whilst it's doing it. At the end of that, it says update succeeded. Remove stick, remove keyboard and high QNet connection. So if you've got a USB keyboard attached to the console, unplug that. Um, the high QNet port at the back, unplug that, um, and then press the recall button to shut down the console. So this is the final stage of the update process. So I'm going to press recall here, and the console goes dark, and it starts shutting down, and it will restart again. Now, while this is happening, this particular update, we're doing a fader firmware update. So um, the, the console is going to shut itself off and then it's going to have to be restarted by us pressing the power button again. So it's shut itself off now and the power button is flashing. If the software update didn't include a fader firmware update, it would be slightly different. The console would just restart on its own at this point. So there's a slightly extra stage here because we've got the fader firmware. So when I switch the desk on again, which is my next stage, what you'll see is as the console starts booting, because we've up, we're upgrading the fader firmware, we'll see some evidence that there's some updating happening. And we'll see the faders moving in very quick succession across the console as each of these bays gets the new firmware injected into it. So the, this is take, take a few seconds. And here we go. You can hear a noise. And we'll see in a second the faders will blip going across the console. Now, that only happens if you're doing the fader firmware update as part of that software update. So not all updates will have that process. So what's happening now is we're installing the new software, and we have to wait now. And this is going to take um, a couple of minutes to, to fully boot the console. But the important thing now is we don't touch the console anymore. We wait for this process to boot up the console. When it's booted, do not touch the console. Wait for the console to shut itself down again on its own. Um, and then finally, after it's shut itself down, you can switch it on again, and you'll be able to use it normally. So we'll just wait for a couple of minutes while this booting process completes, and then we'll see what happens next. So now it looks like it's fully booted, but this is the point where we mustn't touch the surface, because if we just wait for another couple of minutes, the console is going to actually shut itself down automatically. And there we go, it's starting to shut down. And we just wait for that process to complete and for the power button to go off. And then we can use the console normally after that point has been reached. So there we go. The console has switched itself off. The update has now been completed. So when I power it back on again, it's going to boot up within 30 seconds or so. And we'll be back online in the normal way with our updated software. And I'll show you the version number screens so we can see that they've been changed. So there we are. The console's rebooted completely. So it's working again normally. So if we go to our menu, we look at the main menu. We can now see 
software release 6.4.1.309. So that's the new desk software with the new 6.4 features. If I go into my system page and on my desk tab, I can now see that in this third pair of digits on each bay, we, we now see number 33 instead of 31. So we've updated that fader firmware as well. So there we are. Just make sure you follow the instructions, load a default show before you start the process. If you don't do that, then you'll capture some of your existing show file in the Hibernate image that we make when we do the software update, and that can lead to problems. So you must load the default show first. Make sure you've got the right files on the USB stick and wait for the console to properly shut down. Don't touch it. Uh, otherwise, you'll if you start moving things on the console before it's properly shut down, again, those changes you make will be recorded into the Hibernate image, and then you'll have to repeat the update process. If anything doesn't go according to plan, then just repeat the update process again when you should be OK. So that's how to update a software release on the VI consoles. Thanks for watching, and look forward to another video soon.